Welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at equations that involve the squared symbol. Now, we're going to focus in this video on simple x squared equations. So that's where we've got x squared equals a number, or maybe something like 3x squared equals a number, or x squared plus something equals a number. Um, so these are going to be what we call simple quadratic equations, or simple x squared equations. If you want to look at more complicated equations that involve the squared symbol, watch the Corbett Maths videos on factorizing quadratics and solving quadratics. And those videos will explain it in a bit more more detail. So let's have a look at our first example. So our first example says solve x squared equals 25. Now remember, whenever we're solving an equation, we want to find what x equals. So we want to find the value that x represents. So what number squared will equal 25? Now by looking at this, you might automatically know that one of the solutions is equal to 5 because 5 squared is equal to 25 because 5 times 5 is equal to 25. Also remember that whenever we multiply a negative number by itself, that's also positive. So if we had negative 5 multiplied by negative 5, well, 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is also equal to 25, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and 5 times 5 is 25. So this equation has two solutions. One answer is x equals 5, or another answer is x equals negative 5. So we could write that down, x equals 5, or x equals negative 5. And they would be our two solutions for this equation. So equations that involve x squared will often have two solutions. Sometimes they have just one solution, and sometimes they actually have no solutions at all. And another thing that I want to show you is that it's actually a symbol for where we have 5 or negative 5. There's a symbol in maths called the plus or minus symbol. So sometimes you'll see this. You'll see that x equals plus or minus 5. And this plus sign and a little minus sign beneath it means plus or minus. And that means that x can be equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 5. So this plus or minus means plus or minus. So that means that if we had x squared equals 25, that x can equal plus or minus 5. I tend to write my answers though out as x equals 5 or x equals minus 5, like so. Let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says solve x squared equals 64. So we've got our equation and it's got our squared symbol and it says a number squared x squared equals 64. Now 8 squared is equal to 64. So 8 squared is 64. So I know that 8 is one of our solutions. Also remember the squared of 64 is 8. But also remember that negative 8 times negative 8 is also equal to 64 because 8 times 8 is 64, so negative 8 times negative 8 is also equal to 64, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So we've got two solutions, we've got x equals, and let's use that plus or minus symbol, we've got plus or minus 8, and that means that x equals 8, or x equals negative 8. And I'm going to write that out in full, because I like to do that, I'm going to write x equals 8, or x equals negative 8. There are solutions for that equation. So let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says solve x squared equals 144. Now the square root of 144 is 12, so that means that x equals 12, but also remember it could equal negative 12 as well, because negative 12 times negative 12 is also equal to 144. So x equals plus or minus 12. x equals positive 12, or x equals negative 12. Now I'm going to write that out in full. x equals 12, or x equals negative 12. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, solve x squared plus 3 equals 52. So we want to find what x is, but we've got this squared and we've also got this plus 3. Whenever we're solving equations, we want to work in a reverse Bob mass order. So we want to get rid of any adds or subtracts, then we want to get rid of any divisions and multiplications, and then any powers or orders or indices, and then finally we want to deal with any brackets as well. And that would be how we would approach solving an equation. So whenever we're solving this equation, we want to get rid of our plus 3 first of all, and then we want to get rid of the squared. So let's take away 3 from both sides of the equation. So x squared plus 3, well we're taking away 3 to get rid of the plus 3, so that will just leave us x squared. And on the right hand side of the equation we had 52 minus 3. Now 52 minus 3 is equal to 49. Now we want to get rid of the squared, so we're going to want a square root, but we also want to make sure that we don't forget any negative answers as well. So we want to figure out what number squared gives us 49. Well, that's going to be equal to 7, because the square root of 49 is 7, so x equals 7. But also remember that it could be negative 7, because negative 7 multiplied by negative 7 is also equal to 49. So that means that x is equal to plus or minus 7. So x equals 7, or x equals negative 7. 
And let's just check our answer. If we had seven, seven squared is equal to 49, plus three is 52. But if we had negative seven, negative seven squared, well, negative times a negative is a positive, so negative seven times a negative seven is 49, plus three is also equal to 52. So there are two solutions. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, solve 6x squared equals 150. So again, we wanna get the x on its own, so we wanna get rid of the multiply by six, and we wanna get rid of the squared. And remember, we work in a reverse bob mass order, so we wanna get rid of any divisions or multiplications, and then we're gonna get rid of any squares. So to get rid of the multiply by six, we're gonna do the inverse, we're gonna divide both sides by six. So divide by six and divide by six. So six x squared divided by six, well that would just be one x squared or x squared, and that gets rid of the six. And then on the right hand side of the equation, we had 150 divided by six, and 150 divided by six is 25. So we've got x squared is equal to 25, a number squared is equal to 25. And that means that we're going to work out the square root of 25, which is 5. So that means that x equals 5. But also remember, it could be negative 5 as well, because negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. So it could also be equal to negative 5. So let's write plus or minus 5. So x equals plus or minus 5. And then let's write our two solutions out. So x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. Right, so let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says solve 3x squared equals 48. So again, we want to get the x on its own. So let's get rid of the multiply by 3 first of all. So let's divide by 3 and divide by 3. 3x squared divided by 3, well, that would just be x squared, 1x squared, which is x squared. And then 48 divided by 3 would be 16. Now we're looking for a number squared that would give us 16. Well, let's work out the square root of 16. That's 4. So that means that x could be equal to 4. But also remember that negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So x equals plus or minus 4. So let's write out our two solutions. So x equals four or x equals negative four. Okay, so let's have a look at our last question. So our last question says solve x plus three in brackets squared equals 100. So that means we've got a number, we're adding three and then we're squaring it to get 100. So if we work backwards, well the square root of 100 is 10. So that means that x plus three will have to equal 10 or negative 10 because 10 squared is 100 or negative 10 squared is equal to 100. So let's write that down. X plus three equals 10 or X plus three equals negative 10. Now let's solve both of these equations. So let's look at the equation on the left hand side. So we've got X plus three equals 10. So let's take away three to get rid of the plus three. So X plus three take away three, well that's just X. And on the right hand side, 10 take away three is equal to seven. Or, on the right-hand side, this equation, we had x plus 3 equals negative 10. So you want to get rid of the plus 3, so let's take away 3 and take away 3. x plus 3, well, we've taken away 3 to get rid of the plus 3, so that's just going to leave us with x. And on the right-hand side, we had negative 10 take away 3. Well, that means 3 lower than negative 10, so that would be negative 13. And let's just check our two answers. So let's start off with x equals 7. So if we had 7, we have got 7 plus 3, that's 10, squared is equal to 100. And if we had x is equal to negative 13, well, negative 13 plus 3 is negative 10. Negative 10 squared, well, negative 10 times negative 10 is equal to a positive and that's positive 100. So those are our two solutions, x equals seven and x equals negative 13. So in this video, we've looked at how to solve x squared equations. So simple x squared equations. These are sometimes called quadratic equations, but these are very simple ones. And if you wanna look at more detailed equations that involve x squared, have a look at a topic called factorizing quadratics and solving quadratics, and that will help you with that. So if you found this video useful, please like it, please subscribe to Corporate Maths on YouTube, and thanks very much.